let us all that we can to build a better future. So, we here at Harlan's Media want to be consistent with a lot of things. One of them is making sure that we encourage more citizen journalists across the country to step up. And since after 2016, and even after the 2020 election, we've seen a rise of many independent media networks step up and actually leading the way and working with other community organizers and activists speaking truth to power. <clears throat> One of them uh, is actually joining our show today. He is uh, a proud member of Revolution Blackout Network. They recently had their first year anniversary on April 1st, which is our, also our birthday as well. We're five years old, so I guess Hard Lens Media is the bigger brother. But shout out to James Falteroy, who is the host, uh, one of the hosts of Revolution Blackout Network. He also has done a lot of phenomenal work speaking truth to power, interviewing activists, organizers, uh, journalists as well. So, James, I was on your show twice. It's long overdue for you to be on Hard Lens Media. Thank you so much for making the time for our viewers and subscribers. If they don't know who you are, please introduce yourself to them. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. My name is James Fauntleroy. I am also part of the Revolutionary Blackout Network. I host the JB Show on Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I also have my own channel called the JB Font Channel, uh, and I do my shows on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so you can always find me there. Uh, it's so good to be with you today. Uh, I actually enjoy your work and the work that you've been doing here at Heartlands Media, uh, and I, I think it is uh, desperately needed, uh, especially in the type of environment that we're in right now. Um, and especially with, you know, people, you know, corporations, corporate media like CNN circling the drain <laughs> right now, as you were talking about earlier, <laughs> uh, a, a lot of us are more, you know, you know, like this, you know, <laughs> and we're just like, we're, we're cheering because the thing is, is that a lot of times they they tout the corporate narrative and they also, you know, as far as even the 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 corporate insurance narrative, they actually tout that as well as, uh, you know, Scott, uh, the Snoyers, you know, has, you know, been so elo eloquently talking about. Unfortunately, you know, they're all in the same group. I think it was George Carlin who said it is a big club and you ain't in it and, and you ain't in it. Yeah. So, I mean, truth be told, uh, it, it's good to see that many people are waking up and I'm just glad to be here, you know, to rub shoulders with you. Well, here's, here's the thing. Cause there's, there's a lot to really unpack because especially what happened, uh, during this beginning months of yeah. April. I mean, number yeah. one, again, first, congratulations for Revolution Blackout Network. First year, April, April 1st, April Thank Fool's you. Day, your birthday. It was our birthday, too, for here at Harlan's yeah. Media. So yeah. a lot of things happen. Of course, April Fool's Day is always associated with, you know, like, you know uh, pl playing jokes, pranks here and there. But I think to everyone's su surprise, uh, the Amazon Labor Union got a big win. And for a minute there, I was thinking, yeah, okay, come on, what? what when someone going to say April Fool, but then, oh, oh, it's real. And this mm -hmm. is actually happening. And there's been yeah. a huge celebration, especially a big yeah. one for unions. I think there should also be a, a talk for worker co-ops, though, on the long yeah. run. But that's, that's a conversation. Maybe, maybe we can continue on for a little bit later. But mm -hmm. this was a big win. But what happened, especially after this win, was we saw a certain politician named AOC, for example, yeah. Try and jump on board, even though when the Amazon Labor Union first reached out to her like nine months ago for help, she never showed up. She gave them the cold shoulder. A lot of people report that. A lot of independent media networks report on it. And I know that Kristen Smalls was on Revolution Blackout Network as well. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned, look, this isn't about her. It's not for her. This is about the workers. And a lot, some of those workers are also constituents in her district. They just have to travel to yeah. that, that warehouse. Now, AOC, I yeah. mean, I know, I know it's a foreign concept, but, you know, maybe you should talk to your constituents to find out where they work because they might not be working in your district. But she didn't show up. And since then, there's been this white liberal pushback against Christian Smalls saying, how dare you challenge AOC? How dare you be critical of AOC? And then Sabrina, shout out to Savvy Sabs, of course, who even covered this uh, story as well, where members of AOC staff reportedly saying that that event that was uh, and and the group that uh, Amazon Labor Union that Christian Small was leading was deemed thuggish and 
well, violent, maybe aggressive, but especially with the word thuggish. I mean, that's that's not right. And then at the same time, too, uh, another person decided to screenshot Christian Small's Twitter page by saying, oh, no, he follows them. And them being Revolutionary Blackout Network. Your account was also shown. Compton J, Tabby Sabs, a few others. Apologies if I'm missing anyone. But for the most part, which sounds, well, pretty bigoted and racist in many ways. By saying, oh, no, he follows them. He said and those people. Those, oh, those people. Those people. Oh, thank, thank you for the correction on that one. I think it's only fair we, we address your comments on this one because... This was a strike or a pushback against Revolution Blackout Network, even though you guys had him on his show, you have people now finger wagging at Christian Smalls. Look, I'm just looking it up right now. We literally had Chris Smalls on our network a year ago. A year ago to today. And look. Uh, just full disclosure, when this person decided to follow Chris Smalls this late in the game, this person, whenever you follow somebody on Twitter, it shows the recommended people that you should follow. It was uh, the photos were of people like myself, Ron Placone, my revolutionary blackout colleague, Nick. I as well as, as CJ. And I'm trying to remember who else. I, I, I forget who else. They were towards the end. But many of us who are in this space were getting Christian Smalls on our channels and giving him a platform so that he can disseminate this information out and to advocate for this so that they can unionize and get more power because workers deserve more power, okay? And because of that, we're in union with him. So it is quite apropos that they put us as recommended to follow as well as with Christian, Christian Smalls. And this person decided to use a racist trope saying the those people those people it's like a person didn't obviously realize how racist that sounds because that's been used for years against those of us who are black and if He's being boosted by those people. Maybe, just maybe, you should give those people a listen because they were the ones who were promoting Chris Smalls. I didn't see Christian Smalls on Fox. I didn't see Christian Smalls on MSNBC. I didn't see him on CNN. I didn't see him on ABC. I didn't see him on CBS. I didn't see him on man, one of them. And yet, I, didn't, I don't recall him being on TYT. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Was he on TYT? <laughs> uh, oh, this Hang is a question on. towards was, me. Was uh, he? Well, I, I don't. I, you know what? Wait, 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 wait. I got, I got a perfect response. We'll look into it. That's, that's like I would say. But no, I don't think he was. But, <laughs> but as a TYT response, they'll look into it. Yeah. Because, I mean. So many of us have platformed him, you know, in order to get this word out. And here's my question. If AOC was so behind it, then why did she ghost them initially? Because this is well documented by Jordan Sheridan of Status Quo. In fact, he was on the ground the day she was supposed to show up and she ghosted them. Yeah. And if she's so proud of it, why didn't she platform Chris Smalls herself for her 12 million Twitter followers to see? 
for people to see on mainstream media. Why didn't she platform him? Well, yeah. the, the, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I think the answer, I, we, we've seen this before, especially with no, most notably, force a vote for Medicare for All, the March for Medicare, uh, the, the March for Medicare yeah. for All. AOC didn't show up because I guess, yeah. what, it's violence. It's not in her ability to be, be there, but yet she has time to go to the, the Met Gala event, have a fancy little dress as tax and rich. Uh, but I think this is all just platitudes at this point because here you have a lawmaker with, again, 12 million Twitter followers. She could stamp her feet and she could form a legion. If she's afraid of COVID or the pandemic, she could do an online event saying, hey, here's what's happening with ALU. There's nothing stopping her. There's a whole, if I could come up with like a treasure trove of ideas right now, she could do an online uh, uh, town hall. She could be tweeting about it. If she can't show up and she's really that afraid for security, she can maybe do a short two minute video saying, hey, here's what you guys need to do. So help them out. Exactly. Look, I don't need to come up with these ideas. Exactly. AOC, you're supposed to have a direct team, but I guess your team is so busy smearing, again, the Amazon labor union by saying, oh, what, they're too thuggish? That's questionable as what? well, which is pretty violent on their part. What is that about, too? Like, really? Thuggish? Thuggish. Okay, so... Number one, that is racist in itself. Number one. Number two, that is elitist in itself. So... You... <laughs> Tell me you don't like working people without telling me you don't like working people. Like, really, that's really what it is. Especially a lot of working Black people who actually work for Amazon. Mm -hmm. it, it's, I, like, it's like a lot of, I like the mask is slipping. Actually, not, it's not even the mask is slipping. The mask has been off for a while. It's just people just are just now listening to us. It, it, it's interesting to point out the fact that a lot of these progressives, people put their hopes on. And look, I, mm -hmm. I in 2018, I think we all, when, especially when the squad, for the quote-unquote squad, because they're not a squad, but when the squad got elected into office, I think a lot of us remember the feeling like, oh my God, we got a progress, we got progressives, yeah, into Washington D.C. We actually beat establishment people, but yeah, the the corruption and the infestation that's there. Uh, in regards to people being swallowed in by that swamp bubble in Washington, D.C., must be yeah. far more damaging than we thought, or is it that there's a controlled image? Because, again, when you have these politicians being cri uh, being criticized, there's always their sycophants that are quick to go to bat for them. We, we've seen TYT do it. We've seen yeah. Majority Report do it. We've even seen Sam Cedar. I'm seeing Savvy Sabs in the chat right now, but even Sam Cedar kept on berating her when she tweeted out challenging him all the way up until midnight or something like that. She did a coverage on that a while ago. Shout out again to Sabrina. Be sure to check out her work. She's been a guest on, the, on Hard Lens Media before. But again, there's there's this idea of finger wagging that we see from a yep. lot of white liberals or larger media networks on YouTube or on corporate media that want to, I guess, tell black people, Latinos, working class people, hey, just calm down. You got to be pragmatic and you have to wait, <laughs> which I have to say can can did does the Scott son have to wait? I mean, look what happened to him when we have to wait for Medicare for all or mental health. How much longer do we have to wait? But then again, when these issues are brought up, especially by new independent media networks like yourself, there's this yeah. immediate pushback and suppression that we see from larger channels, coveted blue check marks, a lot of white liberals yeah. trying to tone police. And at this point, in in, in regards to this, because I know you and your team have talked about this a lot on Revolution Blackout Network, but how do we counter this bigoted, racist talking point of trying to control speech, especially by new journalists and independent commentators like yourself and the crew at Revolution Blackout and so many others that are trying to say, wait, we can't afford the wait. We have to do this fight now. How, how come we cannot criticize these politicians? Can we get your thoughts on that? Yeah, the way to do it is just doing exactly what we're doing right now, is to keep talking about it. Um, uh, I think this part of it is also letting our names be known, not just in this sphere, but when we go out, you know, in the streets, if we can participate in some type of direct action. Yeah, I know some of us don't have the exact ability. Some of us have limitations like myself, I'm disabled. But, you know, when we can get out there, we let them know who we are and we continue to keep talking about it. And it's not just talking about it in these spaces, but we're, you know, with our neighbors, with our friends, with our family. 
and let them know exactly what's going on and how we are being constantly being suppressed. Um, and, you know, what, what has been going on as far as, you know, silencing us is it's anti-democratic. Uh, and it's, you know, it goes against the grain of true press freedom because I mean, look, you know, Heartland's media has had, you know, strikes against them from YouTube, unjust, unfounded strikes against them from YouTube and tried to uh, silence you. They've tried to do it to different members of MCSC. Hell, they even did it to, uh, to, to the Hill. Yep. You know, Seven days the they were suspended. Yeah, Seven days. It, the Hill is corporate. And they got it. So they're even even the corporations are shooting their own, their own selves in the foot. And, you know, we, we have to continue to keep talking about it. And, you know, and you mentioned about, you know, the white liberal and how, you know, uh, Sam Cedar decided to go after my co-host and friend, Savvy Sabs. Shout out to you, Sabs. Number one, she didn't tag him or anything. He just found her. That's weird, dude. Like, and he kept going until midnight. Dude, get a life. <laughs> um, and I'm sorry that she had to go through that, though. Yeah, of course. But, you know, it's just like. This the sycophancy of politicians, it's like, OK. Do we hold their feet to the fire or not? What do we do then? And people say, well, there are allies in government. No, they're not. No politician is an ally. I don't care what they say. Their allyship will be proven until otherwise, once their actions speak louder than their words. And right now, guess what? Their actions are showing us exactly who they are. Because every single time they sit, because they, a lot of times, here's the thing. It's about image. Our government is about optics. People will get mad at me when I say that Katani Brown Jackson is all about optics. No, don't, you know, never mind that she was endorsed by the Fraternal Order of Police. Never mind that, you know, if Joe Biden likes her, then that means that there's something about her that coincides with his type of values, which do you really like Joe Biden's values? I sure as hell don't. You know, I mean, this is the same guy that, you know, did a eulogy for Strom Thurmond. Why would I want to be in, uni you know, in unification with somebody like that as far as my values are concerned? You got to stop Trump, I guess. We all got to stop Trump, the orange boogeyman. You know, it's funny. I I I'm glad you mentioned Trump because let me say this. A lot of people are scared of Trump. Um, here's the thing. Is Trump horrible? Absolutely. But mm -hmm. guess what? Who did he learn that from? Maybe somebody who's been in government for the last 40 years who knows how government works, i.e. somebody like Joe Biden, who is doing the exact same things that Trump has done. The kids are and still in cages. Kids are still in cages. He's been trying to cut Medicare and Medicaid. By the way, you mentioned about, he, he, about the elderly who are on Medicare. Those of us who are disabled, we're also on Medicare too. And we also have to pay a, co uh, uh, sorry, a premium every single year as well. So that actually comes out of us. He wanted to cut that Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. He wanted to cut all these different things. So guess what? And people will want to say, well, he's the same. No, he's, he, he's, he's not the same as Trump. Yes, he is. And in some ways, he might be even worse than Trump. But a lot of people don't want to talk about that. And so and then you have a lot of people who want to align themselves. I mean, wasn't that the State of the Union address that Jamal Bowman said and, and basically in B-roll footage, he looked at Joe Biden and said, hey, man, I'm just trying to be more like you. 
No. What? What? Bro, I know. That was disappointing to see. What? I, as, as, as soon as I saw that, that was like, oh, Jamal, I went to bat for you so many times. Because I was rooting for him. Uh, in that election uh, in, in New yeah. York State, where the previous his predecessor was saying, if there wasn't a protest or if it wasn't an election, I wouldn't be out here. Which I got to say, at least he was up front with his BS. I mean, you know what to expect from a, the, the honesty from a corporate Democrat. Again, not, not really expecting much, but again, the seeing the yeah. quote unquote progressive turn to Joe Biden, the same person who uh, browbeaten and yelled at Anita Hill, the same person who has eight accusations and more against him by women for, of assault and harassment, uh, someone who's been on the wrong side of history, been against LGBTQ rights. I, I mean, this, this this is just downright it, 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 sad and pathetic to see where people are at. But another side note, too, the reason why no one's talking about it is not only because the orange boogeyman's gone, but everyone's at brunch. Everyone's <laughs> at brunch, and they're celebrating the fact that the person that triggered them, Trump, is gone. Now, I don't want to see Trump get elected, but when I saw all this outrage, especially even the, the quote unquote victory dance after 20, uh, after 2020's election cycle, you know, I realized that Trump maybe was a mirror for a lot of these white liberals and people that were so offended by him. Because maybe Trump is how they really feel on the inside. Maybe his actions is what they want to do, but they can't because they got to control themselves and they have to be pragmatic and more social. I, it's, it's something I've always found interesting because Again, Trump's going to run again in 2024. If he doesn't, I'll be surprised. But again, they tried to impeach him twice. It was a waste of time. And Trump was once at one point a Democrat, just like a lot of these Democratic lawmakers used to be Republicans. <laughs> You're getting into it, and then that they don't like that. Um, Kit, let me tell you. Here's the thing. Trump... As horrible as Trump was, there were times where he actually told the truth. Yeah, he lied a lot. Yes. He lied a lot. But the things that he told the truth on, they were like, stop, stop, stop. Like, for instance, um, what's his name? Uh, Mr. He likes to call everybody pinhead. Oh, gosh. It's okay. Whoever it is, Trump. There's been a couple he times. Yeah, oh, Bill O'Reilly. Yes. Bald, bald eagle looking joker. Um, so he yes, I call him a bald eagle looking joker. Um, but <laughs> he does he looks like a bald eagle. <laughs> um, that's violence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh he tried to coax Trump Trump into basically calling Vladimir Putin a killer. And he's like, he's a killer, right? And Trump in epic fashion said, well, there are a lot of killers. You should see what this country's done. This country's not so, not so much better. And right then, you had an American president, U.S. president, basically revealing, oh, yeah, 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 we've done, we've done a lot of bad stuff as a government to the rest of the world, which they don't like to hear. See, a broken clock is right twice a day. Mm -hmm. And so he revealed that. Now, uh, is he that much better than Biden? He's no. not better than Biden at all. However, what they didn't like was that he revealed some of the things that they didn't want to be revealed. It's interesting bringing that up because I, I know we're running short on time, but I wanted just to give you a few more t uh, minutes because let's face it, I love where this conversation is going. Because there was another point where Trump did bring up something, but it flew underneath everyone's radar, and it was during the 2016 primary, I think the first Republican primary debate. All 16 candidates are on the debate stage, and the talk of yeah. money and politics was brought up. And Trump, being the egomaniac that he is, mm -hmm. spoke the truth that no one really paid attention to, and that was – and I hope I get this quote correct. I give these people money, being the politicians, I give these people money and they do what I say. When I first heard that, I was like, oh, my God, you just said how the whole thing works, Trump. That was the most refreshing honesty in American politics in decades. And we have to remember, he used to be a Democrat, which got my brain thinking because, of course, Hillary Clinton was in the primary during, against Bernie Sanders in the 2016 primary, where it was, 
wait a minute, Trump, you were a Democrat. Hillary Clinton was a senator who was also a Democrat in New York State, U.S. US Senate, of course, or New York. Did you donate to Hillary Clinton? Because she was at your wedding. And when you gave her that money, did you do what she said? Or what he said, Hillary? Did, did you do that? And the answer is probably yes. Because it's one big club. You ain't in it. <laughs> I'm going to do you one better. Okay. Who gave money to Kamala Harris when oh. she was supposed to to go after him for foreclosing on elderly people's homes in California. I, I know. I, I Hold on. Let me introduce his name. You know him. You love him. You love the him. The Minooch. The Steve Minooch. Minooch. <laughs> yes. Part of Trump's cabinet, Steve Minuchin, gave money to Kamala Harris. And then when Kamala Harris was supposed to go after him, as the prosecutor, the attorney general, guess what? That money came in. She said, Steve Manu, who? I don't know nobody named Steve. And then she left him alone. And she laughed about it. <laughs> and, she, and she cackled about it. That's exactly it. So the thing is, is that, it's, yes, it's a big club and, and you ain't in it. You know, and, and, and even then when you get into, like, for instance, you know, student loans and things like that. You have people like uh, like Sally May that give money to both Democrats and Republicans. And I'm glad you brought up because this is a perfect way to uh, actually uh, have have this segment ended because you talk about student debt. It's mm -hmm. something that that's impacting millions of Americans. I'm yeah. no look. I don't have student debt, but there's a lot of people I know when I went to Northeastern Illinois University do have student debt that are yeah. struggling with student debt. I think it's wrong, and I think. We as a country should provide affordable free education. There should be a debt jubilee for part of all this student debt that we have. Um, I find it ridiculous. The richest country in the world, one, we cannot provide Medicare for all. Two, we can't provide, again, cannabis legalization. But also three, no affordable education, no free college. I mean, other countries have figured it out. Now, either yeah. A, the United States is completely stupid and they don't know how to do it, or B, it's all one big scam right now. And if, if anything, if I had to tell young people who want to go and get a higher education, take your time, save up money, and go to a college out of this country because you won't be in debt. You know, yeah. take your time. Don't go here because you'll be riddled with 50K, 100K, 250K. There are people who I know who are struggling with that amount of debt, and they're going to be paying it until they are long since dead. And it's, and it's maddening. But yet again... We, we see uh, anyone that tries to bring up this talk about student debt forgiveness and the issues surrounding it, there is this tone policing. And again, uh, this is a snippet from BuzzFeed, a, a news article that's a news outlet that is going bankrupt, that has lost all credibility. I don't think anyone takes BuzzFeed at, seriously at, at, at this point. But also, this was carried on through Yahoo, and I saw somebody that I recognized. I saw your <laughs> Twitter account here. And again, it's, it's something that resonates. I love how people who are who are against canceling student debt always base their reasoning against it on that they don't want rich kids getting their 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 student debt canceled. Want to know a secret? Rich kids don't have student debt. Which again, this article is hinged uh, to talk about. Fourteen times people tried to make some unhinged arguments against canceling student loans. You're brought up into this. A lot of other people are brought into this. Your thoughts. I guess if that's unhinged, then I guess I'm off the hinges. And I guess millions of other people are too. Because you have so many people that argue against student debt. I mean, and it's like, it, it, pardon my French. And you guys can bleep me out if you need to. No, but, fine. But no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> of course. Now, as far as student debt is concerned, number one, rich kids do not have student debt because they don't need to go into debt. They don't need to take out a loan. They got it, right? And to anybody who sits there and goes, because I hear this argument all the time, well, you signed a dotted line 
of course, you know, you got to pay your debts if you guys made an agreement to it. Let me ask you this. There's a lot of millennials that probably watch Hardlands Media. Let me take you back for a second. Put yourself back into your four, five, six-year-old body. And you're at the movie theater. And you're watching Ariel the Little Mermaid, right? Mm -hmm. And as you're watching Ariel the Little Mermaid, and she goes to Ursula, the sea witch, and Ursula's like, okay, give me your voice and I'll give you legs. All you have to do is sign this contract. How many of you looked at Ursula as the bad guy? You saw Ursula as the bad guy, right? And you were like, that's wrong. Because what she did was predatory. Because she was young and inexperienced. But it was still a legally binding agreement because even King Triton had to abide by it. Remember that point where he took he took he took his trident, his trident and shot tried to shoot it and nothing happened because it was a legally binding agreement. But why was it wrong? Because she preyed upon a young, inexperienced person like Ariel and used that to exploit her. What do these companies do? They prey upon young people and exploit them. So let me ask you this question again. Do they deserve to have their student debt canceled? just by that metric alone? If your answer is yes, if you think that Ursula was in the wrong, then guess what? Sally Mae was in the wrong. We call, we call them by a different name in the streets. We call them loan sharks. That's what they are. And if you're sitting here advocating for loan sharks, there's a special place in hell for you. Because guess what? That's exploitation of people. Great. And so when people want to talk about how, oh, well, you signed on the dotted line, you mean to tell me that you're willing to allow a 17-year-old, a 16-year-old to sign on a dotted line to owe thousands upon thousands of dollars, and yet they're not allowed to go into a Wawa or a 7-Eleven and buy a pack of Cools to smoke? Yeah, they're too young to buy cigarettes, but yet they can sign on the dotted line for that. It's something they're, else. They're it's too like young to do that, but you're, you know, it, it, it's, it's wild. It's beyond my imagination as the fact that you're willing to allow kids to sign for this. And yet you're still the same one that says, oh, well, the human brain isn't completely fully developed until the age of 22, then why are you making them sign these contracts for all this money? You know, it, it, here's, here's the thing. I've, I've, there, there's another thing to it. It's the societal expectations that's been drilled yeah. into us. Because as a kid, that was also mm -hmm. drilled into my mind. Yeah, you go to school, elementary school, high school. Next thing, you go to college, you get a job, raise a family, a house, two cars, a dog, Three kids, whatever. I mean, that's, that is the quote unquote package deal. That's, that's what you're supposed to do. That's what society pushes on us. But again, with this neoliberal nightmare that we're in, let's face it. When it comes down to getting an education, especially for working class families, for yeah. anyone in struggling communities all across this country, it's an impossible task. And then add on to student debt. It's almost why would anyone take that risk? And for those that have done that risk, who felt doing the right thing, it's, it's, it is predatory. And mm -hmm. you have politicians who help implement laws to make that system and for these predatory systems to exist. So they would not exist were it not for our lovely Democratic and Republican lawmakers to help implement that. Because again, yeah. our politicians are bought. They have no integrity. Sex workers probably have more integrity than these politicians at this point. Because that's how bad these politicians truly are. And again, when we look at how the system is completely falling, uh, falling apart, you have a generation now of people that are still continuously paying off student debt. And they are unable to live the American dream. So I, again, with what that article that Yahoo, that clip from BuzzFeed, 
and they use a screenshot as a gotcha towards you. I find that, again, to be offensive. I find it to be wrong on their part because i got to ask you this. Did anyone from BuzzFeed or Yahoo reach out to you for your comment on that tweet? Because, again, they, again, Yahoo News, and there's BuzzFeed, BuzzFeed, which is going bankrupt because their stock is crap and no one watches them anymore because they're junk. Did anyone from BuzzFeed or Yahoo reach out to you? I mean, they had a screenshot of your Twitter. They can private message you. Did they talk to you? Hell no, they didn't. No, no, no. They didn't reach out to me because they're not interested in my voice. See, they they want to use my voice in order to say, look at this unhinged commie. Look at him. Piss posh. This is the bottom rung of the economic ladder. By the way, I am on the bottom rung of the economic ladder, but why? Because the system doesn't care about people like me. Let's be real. And it shows by articles written like this, saying that I'm unhinged. I, I wish it was just a sarcastic remark, but I don't know if it is. You know, but uh, people like like BuzzFeed, uh, I wish you had reached out to me. I would have explained to you the exact same thing I just explained right here. You know, and so people are tired of being preyed upon. And full disclosure, I don't have student loan debt because I never went to college because I was afraid of student loan debt. That's why I didn't go to college. And I'm hearing that from other people, too, even younger yeah. people than myself, uh, who I, yeah. I talk, you know, just sometimes you got a barbecue. Hey, you think about going to college? And then I heard once said, no, like flat out. No, I don't care what it is. I, I'm not going to go to college here in America. I'm going to probably go overseas or something like that. But again, you, you hear this and it's 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 depressing at this point. So we do need to pardon that we need to have full on debt jubilee. And as yes. we are reaching the end of our show. I, I think I want to ask you two final questions. So, number sure. one, where can our viewers and subscribe you, uh, subscribers find you online on social media so they can support your work and all the work that you're doing at Revolution Blackout Network and on your own show as well? But then number two, and this is something I encourage. I want to see more citizen journalists all across the country. I want to see more independent media commentators. It's just It just can't just be a select group of people here and there. And as um, uh, Nick said on your anniversary stream, you know, uh, especially when there was a lack of commentators in the black community for progressive media. If it's not, if, 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 why are we keep on waiting? If it's not us, then who? So what yeah. do you want to say to potential individuals out there that maybe want to be part of independent media, that want to be a journalist or do a channel like this, that are perhaps afraid sitting on the sidelines? Because let's face it, when you're on the internet, the internet can be a lovely place, but it also can be a raw sewage pipeline too at the same time. What do you want to say to those people who are on the sidelines, maybe are thinking about this, but maybe are afraid to take that final threshold. Yeah. Uh, you can find me on the Revolutionary Blackout Network on YouTube. We're also on Rockfin. We're going to other platforms very soon. I think we're going to be starting uh, on Rumble, I think, soon as well. But you can find me on there. I do the JB show on Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can catch me on the roundtable on Thursdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then you can catch me on the JB Font channel. That's J-A-Y-B-E-F-A-U-N-T. You can catch me there on my channel on Tuesdays at, at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm there. So you can catch me there as well as by the same name on my Twitter uh, as well as Instagram too. Um, but to your second question, if you have a voice and you're comfortable being on camera, or if you're not comfortable with being on camera, but you, you still want to use your voice, do it. Um, do it and be prepared for you know, people to be, you know, nasty and vile sometimes, but also be prepared for a lot of love and come into this space 
You know, especially if you know that you are marginalized, those of us who are black, those of us who are queer, those of us who are disabled, uh, women, both cis and trans, if you're non-binary, come on in, the water's fine. Because more voices from different perspectives are needed. There's a lot of space for us to rub shoulders with you so that you can, uh, you know, let people know that a better future is possible. We can have nice things. And I encourage any and all, if you're not comfortable with using your particular voice, a verbal voice or being on camera, you can write articles. If you like to write, make a sub stack or something. And if you still don't want to do any of that, then talk to family members, talk to coworkers. If you're on the bus and you strike up a conversation with one of your neighbors, do something like that, but keep talking. Because the thing is, is that uh, we live in a world and a system that wants to divide people amongst you know, ourselves. They, they do not want us to be neighbors to anybody. Because once you start to coalesce around your neighbors and you all start having that solidarity, that's what they don't want. Because then that means that we can start, uh, we can start strikes, we can start revolutions, we can start uh, pushing for people who are not in a duopoly to help us attain the power that working and poor people should have that, you know, helps us to broaden, you know, uh, our economic horizons so that it's not so concentrated at the top and we can actually have a better life, you know, not just for ourselves, but for, you know, our future generations. I think that's a great note to end it on. And I give you this invite, this I've given to every single one of our colleagues in independent media. If you're ever in the city of Chicago, uh, and you want to stop on by 99 Perspective Studio, maybe be a special guest co-host here on our show as well. Just give us a ring. We'll make sure the door is open. We got a lot of great stuff here. We got a great fifth floor view of the city. We got it. It's summer. It's going to be hopefully be summer soon because it's going to be getting cold here again. But we got a great rooftop view here as well. So again, we give that invite to you as well. Again, to all of our viewers and subscribers, if you're not following James now, please do so. Uh, he's speaking truth to power, or he's part of the Revolution Blackout Network. That's the same group that also led the awesome three-day General Strike Summit meeting, as well as so many other events and uh, rallies that they're doing. Again, this is what we need to see. We need to see more citizen journalists. James, thank you so much for your time. And we're so grateful to have you on our show. Take good care of yourself, my friend. Thank you so much.